Good evening and welcome to the Silicon Valley Entrepreneur, a series of conversations with startup founders and the investors that fund them. I'm Chris Gill, President and CEO of SVAs, the Silicon Valley Association of Startup Entrepreneurs. And this evening I'm very pleased to have with us Alan Gilman, a founder or co-founder and CEO of Tagster. Uh, I should explain that for uh, full disclosure, this is a company that SVAs, along with Cambridge West Ventures, our partners in a seed fund, have put some investment into. But no, you know, it's great to see you here. Thank you, Alan, Thanks for coming on. Not at all. So we recently had you come along and talk with a group of 30 uh, other entrepreneurs about your experiences with Tagster. And uh, that was so good, and they got so much from it. Um, I thought I'd take the opportunity to, to do the same sort of thing on television here. So. Tell us a little bit about who you are and how you came up with the idea for Taxta. Great. Um, so my name is Alan Germond. I'm a current junior at UC Berkeley. And uh, the way I came up with Taxta was because of a frustration that I got from current services out there that told me about places around me. Um, it wasn't succinct enough. It wasn't fast enough. And there wasn't really one service out there that helped me as a as a college student especially, to uh, survive in a college environment. I mean, college students are all about getting the best deals from the best places around them. So um, we originally sought out to be a application that helps you find out about places around campus and around you. But we've evolved um, through time to become a service that gives students the best deals around campus. Okay, so when you say it's an app application, this is an iPhone app? Or? A mobile application, yeah. Okay. And um, having come up with the idea, you've then got to make it re reality. And part of that is finding the team. Mm -hmm. um, how did you go around finding the team to help you do this? So with Taxer's team, as uh, with any founder, I went to the people I knew first. Mm -hmm. So uh, my cousin Erwin, uh, he was uh, one of the most technical people that I knew at the time. So he's our, actually our, our Java server developer right now. Mm -hmm. um, best friend from high school, um, Taylor, who I also knew was pretty technical. And uh, he knew a little bit of Java. And so he, uh, he did some of our Android development as well. And then um, after that, I mean, it was the three of us as founders. And then obviously we had to find an iPhone dev, right? So that's when we went out to seek um, some more people, expand the team, expand the development team. So um, that's when I started looking online. So were these people, you say the, the, the three co-founders, were uh, were they all at Berkeley with you uh, um, or were they somewhere else? Oh, no. So Erwin was at uh, University of Toronto and then Taylor was at Tufts University. But um, it wasn't that bad because we used to telecommute and we used to communicate through Skype. Okay. So um, that was, it, it made it a lot easier um, than one would expect it because we're always available. We would always leave chat messages to each other when we came back from class. Um, you know, this has to get done. That has to get done, and um, so it wasn't. It wasn't as bad as one would think. <laughs> well, why? I mean, that that sounds quite a move. What, were you not able to find um, hackers, engineering talent at Berkeley, where you'd think immediately, you know, hey, there must yeah. be loads of them around there. You, you would think so because Berkeley is full of um, software engineers, computer mm -hmm. scientists, and uh, all types of engineers, for that matter. But um, I did go and pitch a few uh, computer science frats, and I didn't have any luck. It just seemed that the, uh, the culture at the time was you have to get that offer from Facebook, from Google, uh, from Zynga, and um, that's what everyone was working towards. Um, it, it wasn't really an entrepreneurial culture in those fraternities, but um, you know, to each his own. And because I was unsuccessful at those frats, um, I had to go somewhere else. You know, you have to expand the team. You have to expand the team. That's why I started looking online. Okay, so that didn't stop you. Didn't slow you down. No. You contacted, you know, your cousin and your best friend, and you got the three of you telecommuting as co-founders to start up. But you found you needed some more um, software help. So, mm -hmm. what did you do beyond that? So what we did was we uh, went where iPhone developers are, and that's the iPhone development forums, mm -hmm. and they have threads specifically. Um, placed for people to post jobs and uh, opportunities and whatnot. So uh, we posted an opportunity saying that, you know, we're talking about a startup, we're looking to, you know, to gather a team, um, we need someone who has experience in iPhone development, and, um, you know, that's when we got a few replies. And from there we went forward and uh, finally met someone that we thought we would get along with. Okay. 
Okay, and did you start de developing at that time, or what were you doing for you know, for for funding? Was it friends and family money or no money? What, uh, what so it was no money at all at this right. time. It was just us. Um, at that time, when we were expanding development team, we did not embark on any development. At that time, it was all conceptual. What is tag Street going to be? What are we going to do? How is it going to work? What is it going to look like? Um, so we were all trying to define these questions. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we were looking at the market, and there were a couple of other services out there that were developing at the time. And we were just looking at the market, how it was reacting, and how we could maybe you know, foresee the market and its reactions, and maybe be ahead of the curve, hopefully. Okay, so what did you need to get yourselves going? Was it, what, what was the next thing on your mind? Was it to start doing the work or to get some funding or what was, what was the, the next thing you had to make happen? So it was, we agreed that uh, we need someone to um, be accountable towards because as with all of us being students, mm -hmm. having midterms, having tests, having um, a huge commitment behind us with school, it was hard to hold ourselves to deadlines, and understandably so. Um, so what we need, what we said we needed, was a little bit of cash to be accountable towards someone. So after that accountability comes in, then then you you force yourself um, okay. to make those deadlines. You force yourself to sacrifice in other places. And so um, yeah, we chugged along uh, for quite a while actually until we got to a point where um, you know we we started saying okay we have to apply to business plan competitions we have to apply to seed funds competitions and, and whatnot and so um, we move we moved forward for a little bit and uh, the ho this whole time it was it was conceptual um, Erwin was doing some server work he was doing Java work based upon uh, what he thought the needs of the server would be um, a list of location database of places um, how the client would interact with the server, meaning you create tags, you attribute a tag object to those places and whatnot. Um, so um, the one thing that did lag, however, was mobile development. Mm -hmm. And so that was assigned to us. Um, I mean, we lagged uh, in the beginning with mobile development for quite a while, too long, actually. Right. Yeah, so it, it was apparent that um, somebody wasn't pulling their weight. Um, so it, it it basically came to a point where uh, it's a balance between desperation and movement. So how desperate are you to move forward? And how much are you going to tolerate in order to make room for that desperation? Mm -hmm. So you have to keep moving forward and you have to, and you can't give someone up because iPhone developers are some of the most demanded engineers in the Valley today. You can't find an iPhone developer these days. So what we did was we brought someone on board from the forums, and it was it was probably a, a huge mistake. To that, probably the biggest uh, biggest lesson that I've learned uh, to date. But we brought him on from the forums, and uh, he was a contractor at um, an iPhone development firm. And so, uh, when we moved forward with him, he he was the one who was lagging. Essentially, he was the one that would um, say, you know, "I have work," or "I have all these obligations," blah blah blah. And us, you know, being naive. College students said, you know, we understand that you have this and, um, you know, we, we don't really have any, like, rush right now um, because there's no nobody to be mm -hmm. held accountable towards, no deadlines. So um, we went with him for about six or seven months and nothing came out of it. Like nothing, nothing for six to seven months? Nothing came out of it. Probably maybe a little bit of UI skeleton. That was it. <laughs> so... Uh, you could probably see our, our frustration as the server is almost done and there's no client. Usually, you know, the server gets to a certain point where you can start, you know, logging in, making those server calls, logging in, making tags, calling maybe a list of locations based upon your geographic coordinates. None of that was being done. No server calls for eight months, eight, nine months. And so he wasn't pulling his weight, so we... And at that time, like I said, again, again, a balance between desperation and the need to have someone to move forward. We trusted him that uh, once we, you know, we did get funding, that he would maybe wake up, maybe have some realization that this was real now, and uh, move a little bit faster, get something done. Okay. So you were out now looking for funding. You were applying to various things. And uh, what happened there? So uh, it came around to be January of 2010, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we said, 
we need to move this forward. We need to take it a little bit more seriously. We've just been fooling around for about six months now. Um, and we have a good idea of what texture wants to be, what, it, what it's going to be, and you know, asking people around and seeing the market and all that. Um, so we started applying to business plan competitions at the schools. So Berkeley, Tufts, um, even San Jose State, um, University of Toronto, of course. So all these business plan competitions, and uh, we didn't get past the first round in any of them. And then came along uh, an article on TechCrunch about the seed fund with Cambridge West Ventures and Space, and we pretty much said, you know what, we put together a 20-page business plan for these competitions. We put together all this, all this financial data <laughs> that we, uh, we came up with. And so why don't we just throw it into the seed fund and see, you know, is it, what's it going to hurt us? It's not going to hurt us. It might just help us some way, you know, even if we get in the first round. We get some good feedback, and we'll have a couple of people who know what they're doing telling us what we're doing wrong. And we'll keep straightening our path from there on. So, yeah, we applied for the seed fund, and uh, we ended up going through, what was it, two rounds, mm -hmm. right? Two rounds, and uh, we came out with the, with the investment. Yeah, <laughs> just a bit of clarification on that. So this was a process where um, we asked people to, to apply for the seed funding, and uh, we had about 70 submissions. We screened it down to a first round of 15. And then with the idea to get one company from that, we ended up with two, of which uh, Taxter was, was one of them. Um, and what we were most impressed then was, was in the resilience of the team, the ability to respond to what you were getting from the marketplace. So we thought you were very smart guys. <laughs> so. You got through that, and you got fifty thousand dollars worth of funding, and you got some access to to networks. So what happened then? So we did get the money. So now we woke up a little bit. The team, especially, woke up. Everyone just said, you know, okay, this is real now. <laughs> it's not. It's not just fooling around in college and you know saying we're going to create something. We have someone to help, to be held accountable towards, and we have to set some dates, and we have to meet those dates because we we promised something. So. Um, we actually uh, got signed up for a launch event, right? Launch Silicon mm -hmm. Valley by uh, you, Chris. And it was an awesome opportunity. It was a great opportunity to showcase our product um, in front of some of the most influential people in the Valley, um, hosted at Microsoft and whatnot. And it was the, the big game. It was with the big guys. So we obviously knew we had to get our, our stuff together and <laughs> pretty much uh, wake up and uh, put a solid product out there, put a solid prototype that we could showcase. So server was done. Um, you could make calls to it. Erwin had done a good job. He was solid, finished work. And once again, our mobile developer was not moving at all. And um, I mean, I'm going to bring up this, this notion of the balance between desperation and the need to move forward again because uh, we trusted him again, another mistake that he would finish something. And he kept making promises to us, too. So as the CEO of a startup, what do you say to someone that makes promises over and over again? And when you have a great tolerance when you're a startup for that type of behavior and that type of performance, because in order to get somebody else, we would easily go past the deadline, easily. So what we ended up doing was trusting him, taking his word for it, and hoping that he would bring something out by the time the event came around. So uh, two weeks before this event comes around, we still don't have anything. We just have a UI skeleton. And we're ticked, to be honest. We were just completely fed up with it. And so what we did was uh, take it into our own hands at the advice of um, you and uh, Alan from Cambridge West Ventures. And uh, we started building our own Android app because we had Java experience on the team. And we assessed it. We said, can we take uh, a really plain, boiled down version of Tagster and put it into an Android application? And uh, we ended up doing it. Taylor picked up the, the job and he said, yeah, I'll do it. And so for two weeks, we, uh, we slaved at it <laughs> to get this Android application out. Um, day and night, day and night, just pumping away at it. And finally, when the day, when, when the event arrived, we had um, a half-working <laughs> um, Android application that crashed a lot, but it was something to show, and it was better than showing up with nothing. 
So um, I should probably also bring up that we went to contractors two weeks before to maybe have see if we could have two, contingen two contingency plans, one being a contracted iPhone application and one being an in-house um, Android application. And it happened so that the contracted iPhone application didn't even make it, <laughs> didn't even make the event. So it kind of shows you that uh, when you have someone who's in-house and who's driven enough and who's actually personally vested in the product that they'll push further than anybody who's been paid or uh, anybody else. It's, it's truly astounding what a founder can do when times are tough. That's a huge difference. And, and, and uh, I hope people watching recognize the, the difference that made there. Somebody who's vested in it has got a deadline to to meet and you make the changes you do whatever is necessary to at least get something done versus somebody who doesn't feel the commitment to it exactly as much and they're working nine to five or whatever hours might be and if it doesn't get done what's the big impact to them yeah not as much yeah so uh, that that's a huge thing for for any startup founding team to recognize how do you get people who are committed to making things happen yeah that's it's a it's a hard process um, you so we learned our lesson from that case obviously we terminated him after the event and um, you know we ended up paying him for his unvested shares and whatnot so he was gone at the point and now we have no iPhone developer right so we have to go start recruiting again and uh, we tried to do as much as we could but we did end up going back online, but this time we went back with guidelines. We, met, we went back with rules and um, boundaries about, upon like who, who are we going to accept. So we went back onto the forums, onto the de development forums, mm -hmm. and we made some rules saying that you have to be in our area, you have to be namely in San Jose, and you have to be able to be in office, and you have to be a recent graduate somebody of our age, somebody that we could understand, and somebody who would, who would fit in our culture, mm -hmm. essentially. So a um, bunch of college students up at 2 a.m., I mean, I'm pretty sure you can, you can see what kind of culture yep. that is, right? Um, so we did find someone. We ended up fi finding someone who was awesome um, and came on board. And within four weeks, we had a good iPhone application. It was a little bit buggy, of course. But it was there, and it worked, and it made all the server calls. You could tag locations and all that. It looked good. And uh, we finally saw the potential of finding someone who you could bring into your culture. It's like a family. So we adopted him into our family, and then he actually did really well. But we did some – we were careful when we brought him in because we said, you know, we're not signing any papers. We are not going to pay you until uh, – we're actually, we're not going to pay you, but we will – give you stock if you do well, if you do it well and up to our standards. And uh, to him, it seemed fair. He's a logical guy. He said, you know what, that makes sense. If I were to come into a company, you know, cold turkey, obviously, like, I wouldn't trust someone that just walked in. So, okay. He's like, I, you guys seem like a, a couple of affluent people. You seem cool. Uh, why don't we just hang out and build out an iPhone app? So he worked with us for four weeks. No pay. Um, he was committed. He was staying until, like, 3, 4 a.m. with us building his iPhone app, he found it cool, he liked working with us, just joking around all the time. And um, well, at the end of that, we did eventually, you know, we said, you are a part of us now. Um, and we paid him, we gave him equity, a lot of equity actually. And now he uh, he works with us, he's like a co-founder. Right. Yeah. And you found that, so the difference between the two people that you had was one was uh, technically competent and capable but wasn't a good fit and wasn't com committed, committed to it. Yeah. This person was maybe not as technically competent and capable, but he was a damn good fit and he was prepared to work. Exactly. To make and, it happen. And he learned the entire time. Right. Um, you know, iPhone was a new framework to him. He had only worked on iPhone for about six months. Mm -hmm. And um, he's told me now, like, he's like, he's told me, dude, Tagster has opened up my, my, my world in terms of the iPhone framework. And he says, like, it, it made me do things, it taught me to do things that I'd never learned before. Um, you know, working with MapKit and UIKit and all the uh, all the different iPhone libraries. 
And uh, he said this has been a huge experience. And Erwin, the same thing. He said, uh, he told me actually yesterday that this past year, I've learned more than I have ever learned in my uh, three, three, four years of computer science education. So it kind of teaches you the power of going out and building something on your, by yourself. And you teach yourself something on your own, on your own time and mm -hmm. on your own effort. And I've actually, um, I've actually started teaching myself Ruby on Rails just because we don't have a web developer right now. And um, I'm trying to fill that, fill that spot. And I'm teaching myself I'm hours of screencasts, books, hundreds of pages, just so I can teach myself how to build a basic text or web application. And I'm sure once I build that, that um, I'll go on and I'll keep on teaching myself um, the Rails framework. And soon you know, it'll, it'll be awesome. What, you know, you'll look back and mm -hmm. you'll see this is where I started with nothing. No technical experience. I'm not a CS major, but I, can, I, I taught myself the framework and the language. Okay. So it's, it's pretty awesome to to see um, people come out come out of this experience and, and look back and say, "Wow!" And, and we're just starting too. It's not even the end yet. Um, so it, it's just amazing <laughs> okay. the journey so far. So you have. Uh, the opposite way around to what you anticipated, you have an you had an Android app first, followed by the iPhone app, and um, you then took it out into the market. And what was the reaction that you got? So when we took it to the market, originally uh, Taxter was meant to be a application that rivaled the likes of Yelp and, and Foursquare and Goal mm -hmm. and all those guys. We quickly realized that you can't take on companies like that head on. It's it's impossible. Uh, they just have more money than you. They have more name, more of a name than you have. Um, and in order to gain that kind of level of exposure, you're going to have to spend millions of dollars overnight. Um, so what we realize is that all these companies, all these services have been grown organically. Mm -hmm. Some were small. And they start really grassroots. And they catch on at a, at a really local, small level. Mm -hmm. So we changed our model. We completely changed the application around. And um, <laughs> we pretty much said, uh, you know what, we're college students. What do we want to get out of Taxter? Because we're going to be the ones that are using this. We said, dude, I want a ton of deals. I want to get deals everywhere. And I'm willing to you know, give up space on my Facebook feed just so I can get these deals. Why don't we just give these places, these businesses, free advertising, free exposure, and um, do it through Taxter? And so that's when we said, okay, you know what, I think we've actually figured out what Taxter wants to be. And that is a service that offers college students deals, the best deals around campus. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about Groupon deals, we're talking about loyalty-based deals. So there's a dichotomy there too as well as people might say, you know, what about Groupon? We don't, we don't compete with um, social deals per se, but we're all about loyalty-based deals. And so we changed our model completely, right? And we went to college campuses now. And um, we we changed the application. The UI has probably gone through four iterations now. Our own model has probably gone through three different iterations where we're trying to figure out where do we fit, where do we fit. So now that we've settled down, we're actually going to be you know we're going to be running betas at Davis and Berkeley, and soon we're going to be at Stanford too. So um, little by little, it's growing organically, and that's the way to do it. Um, I've realized this. Everybody starts organically uh, from the likes of Twitter and Facebook. Um, it's just you start small, you start in a tight-knit community, and then you go from there. And that's what we're trying to do. So when you started out about a year ago, uh, and, and you had the vision of tax to going this way, mm -hmm. and you've ended up with it going that way, mm -hmm. and, and you've had this roller coaster of things happening, did you ever think that was going to happen? Or did you think no, the whole time this was happening, I told myself, this is not supposed to happen. <laughs> I told myself that. I, I, I was like, it, it, I kept on asking people too. I was like, is this how startup is supposed to work? Because this is not what I read on TechCrunch. <laughs> like, this is not how I see it on TechCrunch. On TechCrunch, everyone is getting 500% increases in page views and they're getting millions of downloads overnight. But what sources like that don't tell you is that everybody goes through a huge roller coaster, everybody goes through drama. And it, it, really, it really opened up my mind to the. the to the world of a startup, because the world that they show you in a lot of um, in a lot of blogs and a lot of media is is not what it is. It's it's a lot different. It was a lot more um, up and down, like you said. 
And the whole time I was going through that, I was, I was consistently asking myself, I'm too young for this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 20 years old. I can't go through this stress. I'm not meant to go through this stress. I'm aging at twice the rate of anybody else. <laughs> so uh, that whole time, just asking myself, okay, you know what, this is, this is, you know, and that, of course, it, you, after a while, you realize, you know what, this is what it is because this is how you endure through adversity. This is what adversity is, and the best companies and, the, and people who have the best experiences come out of adversity, and they always look for something positive, and they always look for a silver lining. So everything, something bad happened that we thought, you know what, this is the end of Taxter. We're, we're done. We're not going to go anywhere with this, and then we always, you know, find some good thing, some silver lining out of it, and then we come out of it, and then um, we keep rolling. Okay. That's the way to do it. We're starting to run out of time, but <laughs> you know, it's 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 apparent that you're you know, even after a roller coaster year, you're still passionate about it. The team is still committed to it. You've you've got a, a terrific team going now. You're starting to gain traction in campuses. So what words of wisdom would you have for um, aspiring entrepreneurs and, and com committed entrepreneurs out there based upon your experiences so far? I guess the best the best uh, advice that I would give is um, go out there and try it. Uh, you, you might you know alone it might be hard it might be daunting task but you'll learn so many things you'll learn how to recruit people you'll learn how to how to work with people and and, and see through them and analyze um, who they are and then that recruitment po process taught me a whole a whole bunch of lessons about who to bring into your company, what kind of culture are you going to form in your company, and who fits in, how do they fit in, what are their roles. And, um, yeah, so just go out there and try it. Build a team. Uh, go out and find people, and you'll learn a lot just from that, let alone the actual development and deployment of the product, just okay. getting the team together. We're out of time, unfortunately. Alan, we thank you very much indeed for your time. Appreciate you being here. So it's thank you and good night from the Silicon Valley Entrepreneur, and look forward to seeing you again next month. Thank you.